appreciate him this morning. My, my, for what he's doing. Last week's I'm message. Kentucky. I told you we continue this morning. Mm -hmm. If I can preach, I tell you what, hallelujah, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, let it rip. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory Holy to God, Lord, glory to God. We praise you this hallelujah, hallelujah, more hallelujah. More than we ever had before. Oh, thank you, we Jesus. Want to love you more. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want his train to fill this temple. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. His praise mantle, Jesus. his glory, yes. his power. Yes. His None. spirit, like oh, him. his presence, yes. hallelujah, on, glory to God, Come glory on, to God, divine. glory to God, it's hallelujah, him. oh, Bring we need out. to lift him up, church, yes. hallelujah, him my, up. my, my, nobody else, no other Come thing. On. Worthy of being lifted up yeah. and praised on, and worshipped this morning. Exactly. Hallelujah. We, my, my, this my. we don't come together and gather together to exalt ourselves, to exalt man. On, if that's out. our motive, if that's our goal, come we'd on. be better off if we stayed to house in the bed. Exactly. Amen. Hallelujah. Exactly. Hallelujah. But we come together in one mind and one accord to lift up the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. The first, the last, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. The great I am. Jehovah God. Hallelujah. The first and the last. He is God. Besides Him, there is no other. Hallelujah. Last week, we started this sermon in the book of Revelation, the first chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> How that John there on the Isle of Patmos, when he heard a voice behind him, turned to look and see where the voice Come was on. coming from. Yeah. And the Bible says that he saw that great eye. Bring it out. <laughs> yeah. In the midst of the golden candlesticks. Come Amen. On. Hallelujah. That represented the churches, but then we see and we talked about how yeah. that John's attention was drawn away from the churches. Come on. Amen to that one. Hallelujah. Yeah. That crucified one. His Redeemer, the lover of his soul. Amen. Yeah. Come on. God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. The lion out of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. The Lamb of God that came to take away the sin exactly. of the world. Amen. And we see how he begins to give a detail. Yeah. Description of what Jesus Christ looked like and appeared to him that day on the Isle of Patmos when he was in the Spirit on, on the out. Lord's Day. Amen. Exactly. Caused him to forget all about what the churches right. was, what were the candlesticks and what the church what that represented. Amen. Caused him if we get our mind on Jesus enough, if we get our eyes on Jesus enough, yeah. it'll cause us to get our eyes off of, of the things that the church is doing. Come Amen. On, the things out. that people are doing, the faults that people have, the faults that churches have, and get our eyes and our attention and our spotlight and our focus on Jesus Christ and Him alone, yes. everything else will fade into the shadows. Come Amen. On, and that's what happened to John on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. Exactly. We see him here. We see Jesus Christ was the center of attention. Right. Amen. And that's where He needs to be today in your Come life. On. Preaching. Amen. Preaching. He doesn't need to be some, I'll, if I have time, I'll get around to Him. Amen. Come on, preach. Amen. True. He, Jesus Christ doesn't want to be a part of your life. He wants to be He's your alive. life. Amen. Right. He doesn't want to just be in your circle. He wants your life to... to, to, to he wants your life to rotate around Him. Amen. Amen. He wants to be the center of your existence. Absolutely. He doesn't want to be some a relationship with Him to be something where you can, you know, maybe if you've got time on Sunday morning, you might spend some time in His presence. No, He wants a day-to-day -day walk with you. Amen. Come on. Preach, He wants Billy. fellowship daily. Preach it. He doesn't want to be just a part of your life or if you can get around to Him. Exactly. Amen. Giving Him some of your time. True. And we talked about how that it was never intended for the church to be the center of attention. Come on. It was never intended for man to be the center of attention. Exactly. It was never intended for self to be the center of attention, but apparently that's what the church thinks today because that is where the spotlight is at. It's on self. Exactly. Amen. This past week I heard an interview. It was an old interview, I think, not too old. But they were interviewing a couple of big name mega preachers that had got together and the one was going to let this 
other big preacher preached at his church and it was, an, it was an unusual thing because most mega church pastors never let any one of the other mega church pastors come into their fold and to preach and they was making this big deal and this big thing about it and they interviewed both these men and they talked and they went on and they laughed and everything and I'm not sure and you can correct me if I'm wrong you know our email address you can call me if I'm wrong but I don't think I ever heard any, either one of them mention Jesus I don't think I ever remember, I don't remember the whole interview. Mm. I don't remember him mentioning the name of Jesus. Wow. It was all about, well, I love him and I love him and what he's doing and what we're doing and we can do this together and we can have all this. They might have said God. Yeah. But not one time did I hear him mention the name of Jesus. Wow. Listen, I'm pretty yeah. sure that I am incapable of being on worldwide television in an interview and they're talking to me about my ministry, I'm pretty sure I'm incapable of not mentioning Jesus. Amen. Amen. Exactly. I'm pretty sure that Jesus is going to come up in the conversation. Amen. Oh, great. Hallelujah. If you stay around me very long, you don't have to be ABC, NBC, or CBS. Jesus is going to come up in the conversation. True. Because He's not just part of my life. In Him I live and have my being. My breath comes from Him. Amen. Come on, preach to us this morning. The center of attention must be Jesus Christ. Exactly. Amen. True. We even talked about how that the Holy Spirit is not supposed to be the center of attention. Exactly. Yet much of the charismatic or Pentecostal movement makes makes it that way. But Jesus Himself said that the Holy Spirit would come and He would testify of Him. He would testify of Jesus. The Holy Spirit always lifts up Jesus. Come on. Always points you toward Jesus. Exactly. The center of attention was never supposed, supposed to be the gifts of the Spirit. Come on, praise Yet we have entire movements that go over into fanaticism because they get caught up in prophecies and word of knowledge and word of wisdom Come and on. all of these things. Come on, tell it. But the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit were never supposed to be the center of attention. Exactly. Yet churches by the thousands have done exactly that. Come on. It's all about prophecy. It's all about healing. It's all about manifestations. True. It's all about the preacher. We've got a whole group of people. It's all about the angels. Come on. Amen. True. Angels were never supposed to be worshipped. Never supposed to be the center of attention. All right. They are messengers from God. Right. And God's message has not changed. Come on, Paul himself, and I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm fixing to read this scripture. Oh, hey. But Paul said, if we or an angel from heaven comes and preaches to you any other gospel, oh, hey. let him be a curse. Oh, hey. Hallelujah. Yeah, Amen. That's what it's well, saying. an angel appeared to me and he told me something, but it's not like it is in God's word. Then it wasn't an angel of light. Come on. It wasn't God's angel. It might be one of them fallen angels. Yeah. Amen. Right. That appeared to you and told you something that yeah. it goes contrary to God's word. Yeah. Come on, brother Billy. Amen. Preach it. And we talked about John the Baptist, how he stood on the sandy shores, the banks of the Jordan, and said, Behold exactly. the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin Come of the on, world. Preach to us. I want us this morning to look in Revelation, the fifth chapter, beginning in the first verse. Still in Revelation, Revelation five and one. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Revelation 5 and 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? Come on, brother. And to loose the seals thereof. Now you hear how the, the word of God puts this. I saw a strong angel. Come on. Yet the strong angel was not able, was not worthy. Right. To open this book. Come on. Because the attention here of the writer to the reader is not to be drawn to the angel, but to the one who was worthy to open the book. It says that no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look. There, not only could they not open the book, they weren't even worthy to look in the book. No angel, no man in heaven or in earth. This includes all of the old prophets. Amen. It says no man in heaven, right. no man in the earth, 
Elijah, as great a prophet as he was, and the great miracles that God performed through him was not worthy Come on. to open this book. Come on, bring it out. Moses, as great of a leader as he was, right. was not worthy to open exactly. this book. The attention was not to be drawn to the prophets of old. Good the attention was not to be drawn to man, exactly. nor to angels. Listen to what it says. Verse 4. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. So it may have seemed hopeless. The book needs to be open. Amen. The angels cannot do it. Right. Man cannot do it. True. And John said, I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the book. Amen. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. <laughs> Amen. Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book Amen. and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now listen. Verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Oh, glory to God. Stood a lamb. The old apostle, the old disciple, the revelator, weeping because no one was worthy. And the voice said, Weep not, John. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come on, and he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Come Amen. On, Behold the root of David right. hath prevailed. He is victorious. Right. Where was that victory won? Come on, tell us. On the cross of Calvary, when he put the enemy to an open shame, now he stands there, still the lamb, but victorious and full of might and power. Amen. That's good preaching. And, and I beheld and lo. See, while I was reading this and I was studying on this, like my mind kind of went back and it sort of got a mental picture of how it might have been. Whenever Adam and Eve fell in the garden, when God had told them, don't eat of the fruit of that tree. And they ate of the fruit and they fell. And all of heaven is watching on. Amen. And they see that man has fallen. Come on. No doubt then there was not an angel that was worthy. Come on. There was not a man to be found worthy. Right. And no doubt maybe someone, maybe somewhere in the portals of glory... The angels wept and said, oh, it's over now. There's no hope for mankind. Oh, but behold, there was a lamb. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. There was a lamb that was worthy. The God of all the ages that would put on the robe of a mortal man and walk down through the ages of time till he came forth in that night in Bethlehem and 33 years later would die on the rugged cross and say it is finished. Come on, behold, behold, in the midst of the throne, Amen. in the midst of the beast and of the elders, stood a lamb. Yes, as it had been slain. Come on, preach. Amen. True. Having seven horns and seven eyes, exactly. representing complete and total power, complete and total knowledge. Amen. The seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And verse 7 says, And he came and, looked, and took the book yeah. out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Exactly. Again, we see here in chapter 5 of Revelation, mm -hmm. who's the center of attention? The Lamb. True. The Lamb. All right. Not the strong and mighty angel that it made mention of in passing. Right. Not the fact that man in his pitiful portion, even in his redemptive state. Listen to me. We got these nut jobs, and I hope it don't offend you if I call your favorite preacher that today. They claim that you're a God, and I'm a God, and we're all little gods. Even, you see, at this time, when it says that there is no man in heaven, that's talking about those who have been redeemed, who are in heaven with the Lord. Amen. Preach. 
that are in that perfect state up there, right. and they're still not worthy. Come on. There you go. They're still not worthy. Come on, tell it. I don't care how good you think you are in this life, mm -hmm. you ain't worthy. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lamb is worthy. Hallelujah. Right. When we point to anything or anyone besides the Lamb, Come on, it's worthy. no more than idol worship. Mm -hmm. Because we are setting that thing or that person in the place or authority, the center of attention where the Lamb's supposed to be. Come on, tell it. Angels. I, we're, listen, we're, Brother Tyler, we're talking about angels like Michael, the archangel. Right. Gabriel. Come on. The archangel. Come on. We're talking about like angels that have been dispersed to defeat darkness and kingdoms. Come on, tell it. None of them worthy. All right. None of them worthy. Amen. But the Lamb. The Lamb was worthy because He calls Him the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, had prevailed. He is victorious. Come on. Glory to God. Right. He made a show of the enemy open, openly. Amen. The Lamb Preach. is worthy. Exactly. Not angels, not man, not self. The Lamb Absolutely. is the center of attention. True. Amen. Amen. And this must be at the very center of our relationship with Jesus. Amen. There can be no relationship with the Lord. Come on. Unless you have this right. Because you think, well, I'm in good communion with God. I'm in good standing with God because I worked at the soup kitchen every Saturday this month. I don't, they don't cut it. Come on. They don't boil the beans. All Amen. Right. I'm in good standing with God because I did 15 Hail Marys and I counted my prayer beads and I did my penance and I did my community service. Come on, you might be in good standing with the Catholic Church, but that'll wind you up in hell if that's what you're dependent on today. Exactly. Your work should never be the center of attention. Come on. Jesus Christ and His finished work must always be our core foundation. Amen. 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 So when John on the sandy base of Jordan looked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Oh, he had, the Bible calls him a voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's what the church should be today. Come on. We should be as the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Come Behold on. the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Woe is us today if our message is behold man. Behold self. Behold religion. Behold works. Our message must be. Come on. Behold the Lamb All right. that takes away the sin of the world. Come on. Tell Amen. Preach. Listen to me. Hallelujah. John the Baptist was saying, don't look at me. Look to him. John the Baptist was a great man. But he was not worthy of the spotlight. Amen. Luke 3 and 15. Listen to this. To speaking of John the Baptist. And as the people were in expectation. And all men mused in their hearts of John. That means that they, they were really looking at him as, boy, he's really something. John the Baptist. Oh, he's really great. He's really something, Brother Dave. Yeah. Amen. It says they mused in their hearts of John. And their question was this, whether he were the Christ or not. Come on. That's how much they thought of him, yeah. Brother Sleaze. Bring it out. They thought, is he the Messiah? Mm -hmm. Oh, I feel, I feel the Spirit around him. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, is he the Messiah? Mm -hmm. Is he the one? Mm -hmm. But John makes it plain. Pray. Luke 3 and 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God. Don't get your eyes on the pastor because one mightier than he is worthy of the spotlight today. One mightier than the angels is worthy of the spotlight today. Come on, tell it. Listen to what he said. I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Come on, breathe. As great as John the Baptist was. Yeah. John said, listen, folks. Oh, we got some high and mighty preachers that can take a lesson from this today. Amen. Oh, tell it. Hey, don't look at me. Don't put the spotlight.
spotlight on me. It's not about me. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's about the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. And I am not worthy Amen. to untie His shoes. Amen. You Glory got to it. God. Hallelujah. So out. we see that John the Baptist pointed not to himself, uh -huh. but to Jesus Christ. Exactly. The Apostle Paul, all throughout his ministry, went out of his way Come on. to make Jesus Christ the center of attention. I'll say it. Pray right to me, preacher. I think I will. <laughs> I read some comments by a really, really stupid man this week. I've heard a lot of things about the Apostle Paul. I know some people because he said the law could not save you. A lot of people disregard his writings. But this man said that the Apostle Paul did not teach that Jesus was crucified. Mm. Boy, his Bible must have had a whole bunch out of it. <laughs> Amen. You cannot read the teachings of the Apostle Paul and not hear about the cross of Christ. Amen. You got it. Amen. Listen to what Paul said. I tried to quote this to you a while ago. 1 Corinthians 9 and 16. Yeah. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah. Yea, woe is unto me Come on. if I preach not the gospel. Absolutely. I'm telling you today, the church has pronounced a woe upon herself. True. You got that right. For not preaching the gospel, Brother Dave. Yes, sir. For not making Jesus Christ the center of attention. True. They have set him outside of their doings and their going on and their activities. Amen. Preach. Their philosophy because the cross of Christ doesn't fit into that. Preach. Their man made doctrines because the cross of Christ doesn't fit into that. Exactly. Heard someone say once, well, yes, I got saved there at the cross, but I've moved on from the cross. Yeah. Well, I got one warning for you. If you've moved on from the cross, you better turn around and get back. Amen? All right. You better come back to the cross because not only is our salvation found there, but our justification and our sanctification Amen. can only be made possible through faith in the finished work True. of the cross. Exactly. The apostle Paul said, what was me? If I don't preach the gospel. Yeah. First Corinthians 1 and 17 and 18. Listen to what Paul said. And I told you he went out of his way to make sure that his message was clear. Right. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Come on. Not with words. Not with word with, with wisdom of words. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Paul said, I didn't come to you baptizing. Because I didn't want to, not that baptism was not a good thing to do. Yeah. But the apostle Paul didn't want to do anything that would take the attention or the spotlight or the importance off right. of the finished work of the cross Amen. of Calvary. We got people today that are so caught up in baptism. Amen. If you ain't baptized my way, mm. if you ain't baptized their way, yeah. if you ain't baptized at all, yeah. well, the Apostle Paul was a pretty poor preacher. Amen. If it was all about baptism. All well, right. he said, because he said, Christ sent me not to baptize. Yeah. Amen. True. Christ sent me not to baptize. Come on. But to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. True. Not with wis not with wisdom of words. See, back then during this time when Paul wrote this, there was a big thing about the it was a big thing of philosophy going on in the church. Yeah. And the Pharisees were good at this. They could spew off long, pretty speeches mm. that was intended to take the spotlight off of God. All right. And put it right here. Yeah. Amen. Come on. The Apostle Paul said, I ain't going to do that. Right. Amen. True. I'm not going to draw the attention to baptism. I'm not going to draw the attention to myself or my wisdom. Now, Paul was a smart man. Don't get me wrong. Yes, sir. Amen. He could have, I mean, he could have, he could have wooed some of them with some words he could come out exactly. with. He was an educated man. True. 
But instead of preaching it over their head, yeah. instead of straying from the simplicity that is found in Christ, instead of making something else in the spotlight, in the center of attention, he said, he said this in 1 Corinthians 2 and 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Brother Swigert puts it like this. With purpose and design, Paul did not resort to the knowledge or philosophy of the world regarding the preaching of the gospel because he did not want to take the attention away from the finished work of the cross. Oh, tell it. Paul said, when I came to you, declaring unto you the testimony of God, then he tells us what the testimony of God is. Yeah. Christ and Him crucified. Jesus looked at the, the Pharisees one day and said, search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Come on. He didn't stop there though. He said, the Scriptures testify of me. Right. The testimony of this book Amen. is the cross of Christ. Exactly. From Genesis, when God slew the animals and put the animal skins on Adam and Eve. Right. And all the way to the book of Revelation. And we haven't touched all the scriptures in Revelation that refer to him as the Lamb. Come on. All the way to eternity in the future. The Amen. spotlight is still on the Lamb. Amen. Amen. You got it. Moses, how'd you get there? The blood of the Lamb. Right. True. <laughs> John, how'd you get there? The blood of the Lamb. Yes. Hallelujah. The spotlight. Even in the Old Testament. Come on. Even in the Old Testament, when they, whenever they brought the, the blood in and they placed it in the different places. Right. The spotlight at that time was not on that little lamb that you could touch. Amen. Because that was only a substitute. Come on. Amen. True. The only thing that did was point toward what would happen on Golgotha's hill just outside of Jerusalem. Amen. The spotlight's always been True. on the lamb. Exactly. And that's where it needs to be today. Yes. Amen. Come on. I'm trying to close. We see in these passages and throughout all of Paul's writings that he went out of his way to make sure that the focus stayed on Christ and Him crucified. All right. That Jesus was at the center of attention. Not on baptism. Not on the gifts of the Spirit. Not on Himself. Always on Jesus. Come on. Behold the Lamb. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, listen to what he said. I'm closing. First Corinthians, the second chapter. First Corinthians, the second chapter. I don't know how much that there will help, but maybe it'll stir the air a little bit. Amen. First Corinthians, the second chapter. Landlord's supposed to be working on getting us some air in here. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, third verse. Paul said, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. In the power of God. Amen? Amen. And what is the power of God? He said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Come on. In other words, your faith, that your faith should not stand in wisdom of men, meaning any other way that is offered to you other than Christ and Him crucified. Amen. That your faith should stand in the power of God. Exactly. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. Amen. True. This thing saved us. This thing keeps us. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. Faith in the finished work of the cross of Christ. Amen. Amen. True. So if you moved on from the cross, you better move on back. You better turn around and come on back. Amen. The entire focus of this book is on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Right. Hebrews 12 and 2, the Apostle Paul. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, 
who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. Keeping your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. The spotlight today belongs on Him and Him alone. Right. Amen. The spot, and He ain't going to... Listen. Listen to me. I promise I'm closing. We'll have to continue next week, but I'm closing today. Amen. He's not going to share the spotlight with you. Come on. Or your movie star pastor. Mm -hmm. If you insist on having the spotlight, He'll let you have it. Amen. And He will leave. Mm -hmm. yes. He will withdraw His Spirit from that place. Mm -hmm. Amen. True. If you insist on having the spotlight, Brother Tyler... He'll let you have it. Right. Amen? True. It's supposed to be all about Jesus, Brother Dave, but if you want to make it all about something else, He'll let you. Amen. But you will pay a dire price. Yes, sir. Amen? True. If your relationship with God is built on anything other than Christ and Him crucified, the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul said, no other foundation can man lay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen? But you can do that if you want. But like the foolish man who put his house on the sand, right. when the storm is over, Amen. your house will fall and great will be the fall of exactly. it. Exactly. Because you have built your relationship on a faulty foundation. True. You cannot have a relationship with God without having faith in what Jesus did on Amen. the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. True. Behold the Lamb. Yes. Let's make sure our spotlight. Let's make sure the attention stays yes. on Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy. Amen. Not the angels. Not any man that has ever lived or ever will live. He alone is worthy. Lord. For He hath conquered. He hath triumphed over the enemy. True. He has laid waste Satan's empire when He said it is finished. Hallelujah. And accomplish that which the Father had sent him to do. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning. Have something before we all.